Welcome back guys, in this teaching video I'm looking at 7.4 Static or Rigid Bodies Part 1 7.4 represents Chapter 7, Section 4 of the Person A-Level Maths or Applied Maths Year 2 textbook I'm going to start this teaching video by going through some important facts So we have a ladder or beam resting against a wall In the exam, whenever you come across a ladder question or a beam question where the ladder or beam is resting against a wall please make sure you only label the horizontal and the vertical forces because this would make your calculation far more simple. If you were to label the parallel or the perpendicular forces, your calculation will become complicated. Right, so what we have here is an equilibrium problem. Equilibrium. This implies that two conditions are satisfied. The first condition, resultant force horizontally or vertically is equal to zero. Second condition, the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. To find the moment of a force, we have to use the formula force itself multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So now I'm going to be implementing these facts to exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. Figure one shows a ladder AB of mass 25 kg and length 4 meter resting in equilibrium with one end A on a rough horizontal ground and the other end B against a smooth vertical wall. So there will be friction here, there will be no friction over there. The coefficient of friction at the point A is mu equal 11 over 25 and the ladder makes an angle a beta to the horizontal. Reese, who has a mass 75 kg, stands at C and A to C is 2.8 meter. The ladder is on the point of slipping and is modelled as a uniform rod. Reese is modelled as a particle. Part A, find the magnitude of the frictional force of the ground on the ladder and Part B, find the value of beta to the nearest degree. So I'm going to start this exam style question by labelling all the forces acting on this particular ladder. Remember, we're only looking at the horizontal and vertical forces for simplicity in our calculation. So because this ladder is resting against a smooth a vertical wall, there will be a normal reaction coming out of that wall on the ladder. Okay, so that normal reaction looks something like this. We can call it RB. Because this ladder is resting on this horizontal surface, there will be a normal reaction coming out of the surface on the ladder. And that normal reaction will look something like this. We can call this RA. Remember, the normal reaction is always perpendicular to the contact surface. Since we are told that the ladder is on the point of slipping, so it's in limiting equilibrium, the maximum friction is achieved. And that maximum friction is given by the coefficient of friction mu multiplied by the normal reaction. So if we have a look at this ladder, if it's about to slip, logically it will be slipping to the left and so friction has to act to the right. So I can label this friction. This friction will be Fa, and Fa represents the maximum friction because we are told that the ladder is on the point of slipping. It's in limiting equilibrium. So Fa is given by the coefficient of friction 11 over 25 multiplied by the normal reaction at the point A, which is Ra. The ladder has a mass of 25 kg. And we've modelled the ladder as a uniform rod, which means that the weight of the ladder will act at the centre. So the weight of the ladder would be 25g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. g is given by 9.8 metres per second per second. Now this weight will split the whole distance into two equal parts. So 4 metre divided by 2 is 2 metre. So we've got 2 metre here. We know that the distance from A to C is 2.8 metre. 
So this remaining part over here is 0 0.8 meter. This whole distance from the center to the point B is 2. If 0 0.8 is used up, 2 take away 0 0.8 is 1.2 meter. We have alternate angles. If you could all see, we've got a Z shape there. So this angle over here will also be a beta. Alternate angles are equal. We are also told that Reese, who has a mass of 75 kg, stands at the point C. So we can label the weight, and that weight will be 75 g. Okay, so in part A, we want to find the magnitude of the frictional force of the ground on the ladder. So we're trying to calculate Fa. Now Fa is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by Ra. To work out Fa, we need to know what Ra is. So how do we calculate Ra? Well, to calculate Ra, we can resolve it vertically. We know that the resultant force vertically is equal to a zero because the ladder is in equilibrium. So... If I resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction, the resultant force F is equal to 0. So that resultant force F is going to be RA minus 25G minus 75G. So RA minus 25G minus 75G. This resultant force has to equal 0. So we have RA minus 100G is equal to 0. Hence RA is equal to 100 G. Okay, so we want to work out Fa. Now Fa is equal to 11 over 25 multiplied by Ra, which is 100G. So I can put this into my calculator. I can substitute G equal 9.8. And if I do this, I end up with 431.2 newtons. And that there, ladies and gents, is the answer to part A. Now, part B, find the value of beta to the nearest degree. So how do we work out the value of beta? Okay, so if we look at the diagram, we know what Ra is, we know what Fa is. Also, we know that the resultant force horizontally is equal to zero. So if I resolve horizontally, taking right to be the positive direction, the resultant force F is equal to zero. So that resultant force will be Fa, minus Rb, and this resultant force is equal to 0, which means that Fa is equal to Rb. So Rb is equal to Fa, we've calculated that 431.2 newtons. Right, so to work out beta, I can take moments about A, or I can take moments about B, because all of these forces are now calculated. None of them are unknown. So what I'm going to do now is take moments about A, for example. So if I take moments about A, I know that the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. So taking moments about A eliminates all the forces at A. So we're not looking at Fa and we're not looking at Ra. These two forces are neglected. So the only forces that we're looking at is the 25G, 75G and the Rb. Okay, so if I was to put my pen at the point A, I know that the 25G force will take my whole body clockwise and the 75G force will take my whole body clockwise. Whereas the RB force will take my whole body anti-clockwise. So let's have a look at the clockwise moments first. The moments of these two forces. So we've got the 25G force. Okay, I'm going to draw a diagram to help me calculate the moment. So I can stretch out that 25G force and I can form a right angle triangle. Okay. So that is 2 meters, so I can put 2 here, and this angle is beta, and we have a right angle here. Okay, so we've got the force, the perpendicular distance to the force will be this component over here, and that component is 2 cos 
beta because it's the adjacent of the triangle so it is of the form cosine let's have a look at the next force the 75g okay so we've got the 75g force so I can stretch out this force and I can form a right angle triangle so here is my right angle triangle this distance over here is the distance A to C which is 2.8 the distance which is the perpendicular distance to the force is going to be this one here and that there is the adjacent so it will be 2.8 cos beta okay we're going to calculate the moment of this force we're going to calculate the moment of this force what we want is the sum of the clockwise moment so we're going to add it together okay this must equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moment so like I said before if you put your pen at the point A this RB force will take the whole body anti-clockwise to calculate the moment of the RB force I'm going to draw another diagram in particular a triangle so we have the following scenario this is your RB force so I can stretch out that force and I've got a right angle triangle as you can see okay here's a triangle this angle is beta and we have a right angle here this whole distance ladies and gents is going to be 4 meter so I can put a 4 there now the perpendicular distance to this force RB will be this component over here which is the opposite opposite is always of the form sine so that opposite component will be 4 sine beta okay right so that is the only anti-clockwise moment so now we can calculate the moment of each of these forces using the formula moment of a force is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular distance so let's start off with the moment of this force it will be 25g multiplied by 2 cos beta plus the moment of this force that will be 75g multiplied by 2.8 cos beta equal to the moment of this force that will be RB multiplied by 4 sine beta okay so now I can clean up this equation make it more simple so if I simplify the equation I get 50 and G cos beta plus 210 G cos beta is equal to RB which was 431.2 multiplied by 4 sine beta okay so if I add these two together because they're like terms I get 260 G cos beta equal to 1724.8 sine beta right we can divide the whole equation by cos beta to introduce a tan beta in the equation okay so if we divide the whole equation by cos beta that gives us 260 G is equal to 1724.8 tan beta okay so that's looking fantastic I can make tan beta the subject so tan beta is equal to 260 G all over 1724.8 okay so now I can substitute G equal 9.8 within this fraction and then take the tan inverse so B is equal tan inverse of 260 multiplied by 9.8 all over 1724.8 so if I put this into my calculator and I round to the nearest degree I end up with 56 degrees and that there ladies and gents completes part b of the question and exam style question one here is exam style question two a beam ab has mass m and length 2a 
the beam rests in equilibrium with A on a rough horizontal ground and with B against a smooth vertical wall. So there's friction present over here and there is no friction present over here. The coefficient of friction between the beam and the ground is mu. The beam is modelled as a uniform rod, which means that the weight of the beam acts at the centre. Resting in a vertical plate, using the model, show that mu is greater than or equal to a half cot theta. So I'm going to start by labelling all the horizontal and vertical forces acting on this particular beam. We've got the normal reaction coming out of the wall onto the beam, which is RB. And we've got a normal reaction coming out of the ground onto the beam, which is RA. Remember, the normal reactions have to be perpendicular to the contact surfaces. The weight of the beam acts at the centre, and that weight will be mg. So mg will split 2a into two equal parts. So 2a divided by 2 is a. That will be a, and this would be a. Now, if this particular beam was to slip, it will slip to the left, and so friction will act to the right. So this friction, I can call it Fa. Now, in the question, we are not told that the beam is in limiting equilibrium, so that Fa is not equal to the maximum friction. In fact, the Fa is less than or equal to the F max. This is due to equilibrium and not limiting equilibrium. Right, so we're going to call this inequality inequality number one. The maximum friction F max at A is given by the coefficient of friction mu multiplied by the normal reaction coming out of A, which is R A. So I want to work out R A. To work out R A, I need to resolve a vertically. I know that the resultant force vertically is equal to zero. So if I resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction using F equals zero, we get that the resultant force F will be RA minus MG. So RA minus MG is equal to zero. This implies that RA is equal to MG. Hence, the F max is equal to mu mg, okay, mu multiplied by the ra. Now, if I go back to inequality 1, I need to know what fa is. So if I resolve horizontally, taking right to be the positive direction, I know that the resultant force horizontally, f, is equal to 0. So that resultant force f will be fa minus rb. So fa minus rb is equal to 0. Hence, FA is equal to RB. So to work out FA, I need to work out RB. To find RB, I can take moments about A to eliminate these two forces, so that when I use sum of clockwise moment equals sum of anti-clockwise moment, that will give me a formula for RB. Okay, so now we're going to be taking moments about a. So we know that sum of clockwise moment is equal to sum of anti-clockwise moment due to equilibrium. So if we take moments about A, these two forces are eliminated, hence we're going to be calculating the moments of two forces, the Mg and the Rb. So if I put my pen at the point A, the mg force will take the whole body clockwise and the rb force will take the whole body anti-clockwise. So let's start off with the clockwise moment, the moment of this mg force. So I've got the mg force. I can stretch it down like that and form a right angle triangle. This angle is theta. And this distance is A. Okay, equal to, if we take the RB force, we can stretch it in this direction and form a right angle triangle. This whole distance is 2A 
And we know that alternate angles are equal. Z shape, so that's theta, that's theta. So we've got theta over here and the 90 degree. Okay, now if we come back to this triangle over here, the perpendicular distance to the force is this component, the adjacent component, that will be A cos theta. If we come back to this particular diagram, the perpendicular distance to the force will be this component over here, which is the opposite. That would be 2A sine theta. Okay, so now we're going to calculate the moment of these two forces using the formula moment of a force is equal force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So the moment of the mg force will be mg multiplied by the perpendicular distance a cos theta equal to the moment of the rb force will be rb multiplied by the perpendicular distance to a sine theta. Okay, so we can clean this up. We've got amg cos theta equal to 2a sine theta rb. So rb will equal amg cos theta all over 2a sine theta. We've got a cancellation. The a's cancel. We can take out a half. So we have that rb is equal to a half mg cos theta of a sine theta is cot theta. Okay, so what we have now is Rb, and that Rb is equal to Fa. So Fa is equal to a half mg cot theta. We can call that equation number two. And if I go back, I can call this one over here equation number three. So we can substitute two and three into one. And if we do that, we get Fa, which is a half mg cot theta, is less than or equal to F max, which is mu mg. Okay, so what we notice is that the mg's cancel. We can divide the whole inequality by mg. This gives us a half cot theta is less than or equal to mu. Hence, mu is greater than or equal to a half cot theta as required. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so that there is the end of exam style question two. Okay, so in summary, whenever you have a problem involving a ladder or a beam resting against a, a wall, you must only label the horizontal and vertical forces for simplicity in your calculation. You can neglect the parallel and perpendicular forces. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like, leave a comment, turn on the notification bell so that you get a notification every time I upload a teaching video.